the scripture reading come from the book of Isaiah, verse 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will upheld you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. The New Testament, John 14th chapter.
as a member of the scholarship committee. The committee gave graduating high school seniors monetary gifts upon completion of high school, whereas the passing of Brother Baker is the will of God, and yet there is a human bond that has been broken. Our hearts bleed in agony and pain. We pray that you find comfort in the words of Jesus, who said, cast your burden on him, for earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Lift up your head and be strong, knowing you did what you could for his comfort, ease, and peace until the very end. God is able to comfort you. God can dry your tears as well as heal your broken heart. If you will put your unwavering faith in him, whereas we bow in humble submission to God, who never makes a mistake, and we remind the family to be encouraged by remembering, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Matthew 5, 4. Therefore, be it resolved this day that this resolution is to be presented to the family and a copy kept in the church archive, only submitted on the 8th day of October, 2022. Reverend Albert K. Payne, Senior Pastor, Brandy Jones, Church Secretary, Red by Bernadette Chris. One other tribute to my brother. I will forever treasure the memories of the time we spent together and the many ways you touched my life and the lives of others. Precious memories never die. I will always remember you as a wonderful brother and a great friend. You made my life richer and fuller. You will remain forever in my heart until we meet again. With love, your sister, Lord.
Bishop T.D. Jakes and First Lady Sharita Jakes, the entire staff of T.D. Jakes Ministry, and the church family of the Cottage House, do hereby extend our most heartfelt sympathy to my friend, Lady Rhonda Lawrence, and the entire family, and the passing of your loved one, Mr. Warren, Warren Vance Baker Sr. Our thoughts and words can't adequately express the enormity of compassion and sympathy we extend to you during this time of bereavement. Only time and love serve to ease the swelling tides of grief that engulf the broken souls of loved ones who care. Psalms 91 and 1 reads, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. As much as we embrace you in prayers, know that looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, is where your ultimate help will come from. He won't leave you, nor will he forsake you, and with each passing day, your strength will be renewed like the eagles. May these brief words bring consolation to you, given this eighth day of October, 2022. A signed copy of this condolence letter will be given to the family with a copy to be returned <coughs> in the church files. Respectfully submitted, Pastor Lawrence Robinson, Congregational Care Pastor, Bishop T.D. Jakes, Senior, Senior Pastor. Thank you. 
where you're a minister. You're welcome to tell us in here if you want to. If you want to see the poor people out of the state, you just can't want to see it. Seriously, if you desire to make remarks, please let us line up so I know how many are. So I just, I just want you to know that your Mr. Baker, uh, throughout his walk of life, and especially as he uh, is here uh, at this church, has always been that source of balance uh, that God needed for every situation. And there was no more appropriate song than the song by Sister Chi. As you go through this, and I know you, you've got uh, you know, several things that you're doing here. But as you go through this, declare a need for God it is all we do here. And He's able. And he will bring us through stronger and keeping that, keep that smile and knowing uh, that you have the joy of the law of the Lord. So we're praying for you. I noticed that you all tripped me up. And the reason I wanted to have a line so I know exactly how many folk we're dealing with. So please, if you want to talk, you need to get up the line. If you don't, the urge will be the last remarks that I'm proud to remember to speak. Amen. Amen. Gracias. 
love that the Lord has brought and shown that she did it yet. It just brings so much joy that I got the opportunity to meet her mother and her father. And I'm just thankful and grateful for the 96 years I've had in this church. It's a celebration of love, the love that they showed their father, the love that they showed one another, the strength that they brought together as one. And I just want y'all to know how much I love y'all. And whatever you need me, we call it the Amen. 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 service will be over by now as long as it took me to get up here. <laughs> uh, we had a men's meeting some years ago, and Pastor asked us to choose a mentor, and I chose my favorite for my mentor. And uh, we would meet on Tuesday and Thursday before I went to work at 1 o'clock. And I learned a lot of stuff from Brother Bacon. But remember, uh, is in my mind is when I first got here and I did my first uh, sermon uh, a father and son and brother Big asked me to come and help him do some work uh, to the bench in the church I thought it was going to be one bench and so we got here and it was hot I think it was in the summertime and uh, he had me get up under the bench to repair the bench and I was like, Brother Baker, uh, I know I can get down there, but who going to help me up? He said, uh, don't worry about that, you get up, you know. And so we, 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 we worked for 
about two days preparing some benches. But I enjoy, I enjoyed that spending that time because all he did was he just cut the wood and I had to get up on the bench and try to sit with myself on returning this way and all trying to screw this city in there. And uh, but I had to enjoy his company. And not only that, you know, uh our part of uh, definitely Southern Pierce ministry. And Mother Great will come in and teach some lessons sometimes, especially with their perfect driven life. And it helped us a lot to get through that, you know, even the stuff that we were dealing with in, in our past, you know, he overlooked that and he still loved us for who we were. But you know, and that's all I would say to the family. You know, Brother Greg was a great man. I, I can't say a good man, he was a great man. And he was a great leader, a leader in his church, in his home, and in his community and in the school system. And that's, you know, really, I want to take up on that leadership role that Brother Baker left me. So family, y'all just continue to trust in the Lord and to be together like Brother Baker had y'all together. Amen? Amen. Amen. To this family, Warren, Deborah, John, Phil, and the rest of y'all. Brother Brinkley, after I got out of the hospital in 2016, Brother Baker would call me and say, how you doing? I said, I'm fine. I said, who is this? He said, Brother Baker. I said, okay, Brother Baker, how you doing? I knew he had been sick. And I was in the hospital for seven months. And Brother Baker kept calling me. But for someone that cared about you and your church and your family, I learned one thing about Brother Baker. That he was honest, true, hard-working man. And I know y'all are going through something right now. But I want to tell y'all one thing. Keep your hands in God's hand. One, you, you're the oldest now. Devil, I know you're older than one, but. <laughs> It's all good. Joe, I know you. Phyllis, Joe, yeah, Roger, Joe, Phyllis, I know all y'all. But the same family has been in this neighborhood a long time. Brother Baker was a principal, and he was a principal here at Bedford House. Because when he worked with the set of uh, school um, scholarship fund of the people, he would always do what he had to do. Bethany, we're going to miss you, but we do love y'all. Y'all continue to come to Bethany. Amen. I can't say enough about Brother Baker. When I was working at the church years back, when we had a kindergarten, I was driving the kindergarten bus, I was cleaning the church up. Brother Baker was on the scene. Whatever I needed, all I had to do was tell him. If I needed buffer points, I needed paint, because he would come up in even when he wasn't on his job and do just as much work as I was doing up there. He was just that tight. And he always started to show himself approved of. He didn't complain, he just did. And when I preached my very sermon, he was right there. He always talked to me the whole time that I was working here. He was here without any doubts. He always encouraged me. But I say to you today, they that wait on the Lord said, I do their strength. Hold on and keep on stepping. To be absent from the body is to be present. And we know he's present with the Lord.
best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. A more excellent way. That's what I'm talking about. A more excellent way. Praise God. We can praise again to our God and to this Marie family, all the ministers who are present, to you, my brothers and sisters. We just thank God for the privilege of coming together. I want to thank God for our music ministry led by Dr. Glenn Nixon. Why don't you give them a Soloists who blessed us. Come on, give God some praise. I was listening to um, a rendition of my lead they coming in, and I said, Man, I need to hear that today. I might have to try to sing that. And God bless y'all, boy. He sure <laughs> God must really love y'all. Sister Chu sung that song. Oh, give God some praise. She's a, she's a PK. And then my brother said, We won't complain. And I think that, that describes Brother Baker. Right. Um, Warren Baker was uh, a good man, as you heard before, a great man. He a uh, well educated man, but he was rare. And that some people, when they're educated, they have a tendency to have their nose in the air and think they're better than other people. Uh, Warren Baker was an humble man. Uh, he got along with everybody. He didn't want his education. He had a way of making anybody feel warm and comfortable who were in his presence. Um, when I uh, I was fascinated when they finished the building a few years ago. Somebody was telling somebody, if it wasn't me, that building wouldn't be there. <laughs> and uh, I took exception to the remarks because um, I had to fight tooth and nail to get that building built. But I said, if it was any man who could take credit for helping that building come about, it was Warren Baker Senior. Uh, he, uh, he was the liaison between the church and the city. See that now they say like they don't build as it happened. But Brother Baker, he handled that thing all the way through. I never spoke to anybody from the city personally. He he handled all of it. We got uh, fire hydrants and all kind of difficulties to resolve. He did it all. So if any man can take credit for that building, he, he should definitely be one of the ones that made it happen. When I recommended to the church to organize the uh, scholarship fund, uh, he ended up being the man who oversaw that ministry. And uh, he did an excellent job of sharing with him, but they got, I don't want a scholarship that these kids got to jump through a hoop like they do another. Areas. I think the church ought to be the kind of place where if anybody needs help, we ought to be willing to help them. So that if they're faithful members, I want them to qualify. And, uh, he did a marvelous job of putting together criteria that uh, met those concerns, and uh, he just did an excellent job. Amen. That's why I was kind of surprised when uh, we hit a riff. Uh, in a business meeting, I said something. He said, you know, that's not the truth. And I said, well, Brother Baker, you know what I'm saying is true. It was out of character for him. And then um, he kept talking. I realized we were talking about two different meetings. And both of us telling the truth were we talking about two different occasions. And you know, the devil loves to plant confusion. Right? Yeah, yeah. Call it difficulty. But that's one reason I have so much respect and love for your mama, Sister Helen. She walked out here one Sunday and she hugged me. And I'd always kiss on the jaw. She said, I love you. I said, I know you love me. I love you too. And 
And she came back the next time. She says, uh, Brother Pastor, I want you to come by the house. I need to talk to you. You need to talk to me. And I went by there. And it was because of her efforts that, uh, you know, two stubborn old men can cause a whole, whole lot of grief. <laughs> <laughs> and she just melted all that stuff down. And uh, she said, well, you're welcome back anytime. I said, where Brother Baker? She said, in the back. We were in the living room. He always in the den. I said, let me go talk to him. And I went back and I shared with him. Brother Baker ain't said a word about any differences of anxiety. He just uh, shared like he already shared. It made me feel warm and welcome in his house. And uh, had us a good old time. I, I said all that to say, uh, you know, uh, the devil wants you to focus on the negative yes. so you can't get God's work done. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was, I was watching, I was on that festival called watching YouTube. I you know, pulled up uh, the Underground Railroad, you know, all y'all know about Harriet Tubman. But I wanted to get some other details. There was a lot of information there. Listening to guy talk and sharing some things I hadn't heard before. And I said, well, I'm going to do some research. And so I pulled it up in the church. And uh, one of the commentators was talking, uh, he was uh, expert in genealogies, and he had pulled up the genealogy of two guys. And uh, I listened to that, and it kind of leaked over into another program. And when he leaked into another program, he was talking about. Uh, a composer, I don't remember the lady's name, but he said, she said something a little wise. She said, we have to be careful not to spend so much time talking about the negative that we don't put some effort in talking about the positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead of talking about a lot of negative white folk, let's talk about the good stuff. Right. Do you realize Ali Brown Rivero had a lot of white people in it too? Yeah, you know? yeah. We're talking about the Quakers, but, but uh, he was talking about how they started writing poetry, and the poetry was composed of love and talked about the positive things. And that thing, that thing convicted me. You know, because if you're not careful, you uh, you can start pointing to a lot of negative stuff, especially the time we live in right now. Right. Mm -hmm. We live in some very polarizing times. rise above that. And I was thinking about when I was raised up in my family. Uh, they didn't, you know, it, it was racist time. They had some, all the, the worst stuff. I mean, it all existed. But when I was a child, I didn't know about a lot of that stuff. They didn't expose that to us. Uh, all we had was, I know my mama loved me. I know my daddy loved me. We were raised around love. We went to church around people who loved me. That we were sheltered from a lot of the negative and, and we were allowed to grow up in an environment of love. That's why that's what we're talking about this today. Uh, when Paul writes this, chapter 12, he, he's dealing with, and we talked about it before, we talked about that before. Uh, uh, when he talks about chapter 12, he talks about spiritual gifts. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the church of Corinthians were arguing about. Who had the best gift? Speaking in tongues, one of the gifts they wanted to argue about. And you know, some folks think they are spiritually stronger than you because they can speak in tongues. Yeah. And so what Paul was saying is, you know, don't don't get all caught up in your spiritual gifts because your gifts didn't come from you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our spiritual gifts come from God. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you don't have a right to, to brag about your gifts because because. Because you really didn't have a whole lot to do with them. Right. You know, when, when they were interviewing uh, uh, Michael Jordan, he was saying, you know, they talked about how you jump and all that. He said, I, I don't really have a, a whole lot to do with that. God gave me that gift. And I just knew that as soon as he said God gave me that gift, the interview was over. Yeah. And they didn't want you to talk too much about God. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, that's the thing. That's the thing. If I could recognize that I don't have a right to feel superior to you because I have a certain gift. Mm -hmm. Then I understand that, 
that really all the glory should go to God. Amen. 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 I wish I could sing like, like that lady some of the day. I wish I could sing like, like Brother Jackson. I wish I could. I had a voice, but, but you see, God didn't choose to give me that gift. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he treated me better than he treats Sam Freeman, but that's another sermon. <laughs> <laughs> but but, but, but we, we can't have, everybody can't have all the gifts, but he gave everybody at least one. Yeah, yeah. 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 Amen. And when you get to the close of the chapter, he says, he says, instead of coveting gifts, instead of wanting somebody else's gift, he said, you need to cover the more excellent yeah. yeah. And that's when he reaches into chapter 13 and he starts talking about love. Yeah, right. yeah. Now when you look, when you look, when you look in uh, 12, you'll see that love was a gift. But, but when he gets to 13, he's not talking about a gift of the Spirit. He's talking about the fruit of the Spirit. And you see, everybody can have all gifts. Yeah. But we always didn't have the fruit. Yeah. 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 I'm going to preach today. I don't care. That, 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 that if you have the Spirit of God, you ought to have the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then he says, he says, love is that most important fruit. And love is the most important fruit uh, because uh, love is of God. So then he says, but love, love is at the top of. When I preach the first time, I call it preeminence, but since y'all can, I'm trying to be fresh, I'll talk superiority. Love is superior. He says, love, love is at the top. It's more important than all the other gifts. That basically, when you look in Galatians 5 and you see the fruit of the Spirit, mm -hmm. you're going to find that all those fruit are really nothing more than expressions of love. Yeah, yeah. And so he says, he says, if I can, if I have the tongues of men of angels and I don't have Love, he says, I'm like a sounding brass and a tinkling sound. I'm just going through the motion. Yeah. And, uh, I need to have love. I need to have love. And you got folks who, who brag about their spirituality who think they're superior because they think they're closer to God than you are. But you know, if, if you don't really exercise love, you don't know who God is. Yeah. love, you don't have all the dissension we have in a lot of these churches. You wouldn't have the dissension we have in our country right now. And one of the saddest things about the dissension that's going on, we're not talking about worldly people. Some of the biggest division is among Christian people. The so-called moral majority, folks who claim to be on God's agenda, they don't want, you know, abortion, this kind of thing. But, but you know, you know, when you read the Bible, you're going to find God is, is bigger than that. Yeah, yeah. Amen, amen. So, so, that, so that I, I've got to be careful when I start feeling spiritually superior to you amen. and feel like I can talk down to you. Most folks, you say, oh, boy, there are some people out in the world who are better by nature than you are by practice. Do you know they got some alcoholics that holier than you do? They got some folks who make out the club every Saturday night, but they got better, better habits than you. You can get more love and a honky tonk than you get in most of our church. When you took a drink, they, they, they get one bottle, they take a sip and they pass it. They have four jokers sitting there sipping off of one bottle. We like to roll our eyes and talk about folks. He, 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 he says, I might not have. I might not have a lot of stuff, but if you got the love, it defines the rest. It's better than tongues, it's better than prophecy, it's better than charity, it's better than anything you want to brag about. Love is what makes the difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yes, sir. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you, a whole lot of you are missing, you are missing one of God's greatest blessings when you don't allow his love to just grow inside of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to the house. I saw. I saw the family. You see, see something about family that, that you, you can tell when the family love 
each other. He, they married 68 years. Some of y'all can't stay married 68 days. 68 years. And, and you can see the love. They, they treated each other in a, in a very positive way. You can see it in the children, the way they treat one another. I mean, it was like watching the harmony. That, 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 that's, that's, what, that's what love is all about. He said, by this will be in gold that you are my disciples, that you have love one for another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fat man is going to praise God, and all that's good, all that's necessary. But at the same time, you've got to demonstrate the love of God. Yeah. Yes. The love will be so deep in our churches when folk walk in here, they can feel the love. Tell folk preaching don't, don't grow churches. You want to grow a church, you've got to have some sheep who are practicing the love of God. You get to preach it in the day. But when you've got love to play, love will make people come back. Yeah. Love will cause folks to, to want to visit another time. Yeah. Well, now it's a superior, but love is something that you should simulate. Uh, first time I said something, you should practice uh, You see, it's one thing talking about love. Yeah. Yeah. It's one thing singing about love. Yeah. Yeah. It's something else when you put it into practice. Yeah. Talking about what other folk don't have, you need to exercise some love. And, and see, love, sometimes love hurts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty hard. Pretty hard. Because some people are very difficult to love. Yeah, yeah. Let me, let me put it. Some of y'all are hard to love. <laughs> You know, you go out your way trying to love some folk and they, they don't want to cooperate. But you can't, you can't, you don't have the choice of picking who you want to love and discarding the ones you do not. God said we have to love everybody. And if, if you've got a problem understanding what love is, he says, well, just go right there, go right there to verse Four, and he starts defining what love is all about. He said, love suffers long. Love is kind. Love envied not. Love of all did not itself. It is not puffed up. Does not behave itself unseemly. Seek it not her own. It is not easily provoked. Uh, thinking no evil. Rejoicing in, not in iniquity, but rejoicing in the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sad that we get happy over gossip then we get over the gospel. Right. 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 Ain't nothing like some good, juicy gossip. Pastor uh, uh, uh. Beaumont uh, had a lady who, uh, she, she, she fell in love with a man and she fell hard. And the man decided he wanted to break it off, she didn't want to break it off. So he started dating one of my classmates, just got to be a classmate. And they were walking up the church. And while he walked up the church, this particular member of mine, Good members, supposed to be the best. She jumped on the lady, and they fell into the bushes. They were going at it. The folk went out and broke it up, and they had enough to call me out of church to talk to her. I said, as long as God put breath in y'all, body, don't you never call me out of church when I'm about to preach to deal with no mess like this. And then they can wait till the benediction that can win. But I ain't why I told y'all this story. I'm telling you the my name was in Beaumont, Texas. This is the God's on this truth. I went in there and I dealt with her at the church and I went and sat in my office. When I got to my office, I got a call from California. And when I answered the phone, the first one said, Hey, I hear they fight in front of your church. Y'all missed it, y'all missed it. I'm in Beaumont, Texas. That's where it happened. I preached a sermon, went down with the lady, and went to my office. You're not talking about an hour later. And somebody in California done found out what happened in front of my church in Beaumont, Texas. I guarantee they couldn't tell you what I preached about that. <laughs> 
Nobody, nobody told them what the choir was singing. Nobody told them how the spirit was high. Nobody told them what God was doing, but they wanted to give some juicy gossip. So way in California, they talk about people fighting in front of my church. In Beaumont, Texas. We like juicy gossip, but we don't want to spread the gospel. And we have a choice. You got a choice on what you spread. You, got, you have a choice on what you talk about. You have a choice on, on, on how you allow the Holy Ghost to use you. you. You don't have to spread a lot of negativity. You don't have to spread a lot of bad stuff. You can spread the love of God. People, I got music get You say, but I'm not a garbage can. Don't you be coming to me with a whole lot of gossip. You know, but that, that really don't help a lot of folks. I start, start finding out how you have. You know how you have a folk come to you with gossip? Yeah. As soon as they come to you with the negative, you start talking about the positive. Yeah. You're talking about, so and so and so. Yeah, but you know what? I've seen God really working in my life. God is doing some amazing things to her. Have you noticed how God has transitioned her? How God is, I guarantee you, you keep talking like that. They won't come to you a whole lot with a lot of God. Love is something you practice. It's something that you put into practice. He said, love, bear in all things, believe in all things, and hope in all things, and do in all things. In other words, love is positive. Love has new dimensions. Love, it, it, it doesn't have borders. That, that, that love has a way of broadening your horizon. Yes, sir. Get me to another level. But then finally, I said, love is stable. Now abides faith, hope, love. These three. He said, but the greatest is love. Wow. Love never fails. Whether there be prophets, they will fail. Whether there be tongues, they will cease. Whether there be knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, that which is in part shall be done away with. When I was a child, I understood of a child. I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. You look through a glass darkly. And you see, that's the problem. You got a world who can't see. You're trying to walk by sight. And he said, You can't walk by sight. You got to walk by faith. Yeah, yeah. You can't walk by but what the world is. Like. You can't let the world define your circumstances. No. You can't let the world take your heroes. You can't let the world declare who you are. You've got to know who you are. You, you're a child of God. You're somebody. You don't go to your horoscope to find out your future. You call on the Lord. Open up your Bible and read what God has in store for you. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it been revealed into the hearts of men what God has in store for us. Yeah, yeah. Bless our stuff, God. God wants to bless you. Yeah, yeah. And if you allow love to dominate you, yeah. If you allow love to control you, yes, you'll put you on another dimension. Yeah. Now I'll give you a more excellent way. Yeah. I wasn't there, I wasn't there, but they said they were married 68 years. I don't think they lived together 68 years and not have some, some disagreement. We've been married 60 years and never had our good line. <laughs> so I said, you're going to have some disagreements. But you see, love rides above all. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when you get to expressing your differences and you talk about what you, what's wrong, love gets you to look at and focus in on what's right. Yeah, yeah. Love is the glue that holds you together. Yeah. Love is the glue that allows you to keep going on. Love yes, it, it, it is the kind of time that really helps your vision. I see, you know, he says, I look through a glass that's foggy. I look through a glass that's cloudy. Uh, but now I, I, I can see the real deal. Love clarifies your vision. Yes, yes, yes. Because I start looking at the world not uh, 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 by 
I, uh, according to what I see, I look at the world through the eyes of God. Yeah, yeah. Is there anything too hard for God? No. Is there anything God can't solve? Is there anybody God can't pick up? Is there any life God can't improve? Now abides faith, hope, and love. But the greatest is love. Yeah.